Hi, I'm Jimmy, and it's been like six months since I made my last edition of Neighborhood Watch. And wow, what a difference time can make. Suddenly and seemingly out of nowhere, Mr. Rogers is everywhere. In the light of the neighborhood's monumental 50-year celebration, we're getting multiple documentaries, DVD releases, a feature film, unlimited amounts of merchandise, not to mention that Fred is getting his own stamp. So of course I have to wonder just how Fred would feel about all this. Merchandising, franchising, any kind of ising wasn't exactly something he was at all interested in. Fred was interested in you and me. He listened to people, but especially to children, and knew how to address the things they needed. And it wasn't trinkets and baubles. And yes, that includes you, Daniel. What they needed was reassurance. Sometimes it's hard for children and adults, too, to communicate the things that bother them, deep down, the things they fear. And in this particular instance, Fred knew what their fears were. And he wasn't afraid to go there. It's such a good feeling to know you're alive. It's such a happy feeling. You're growing inside. And when you wake up ready to say, I think I'll make a snappy new day. It's such a good feeling, a very good feeling. The feeling you know that we're friends. You always make each day a special day for me. Fred begins this very important week of shows with paper cups. Do you know what those are? They're paper cups. It's wonderful how even during a week where the topic is so heavy, Fred can still make moments of whimsy out of something so simple. Mr. McFeely. There's a knock at the door, and it's Mr. McFeely, but not with a delivery, but with a mysterious piece of sheet music. Fred plays it and discovers it was Mr. McFeely's wedding song, and that triggers a flashback where we are treated to the nuptials of the McFeely family. Incidentally, McFeely is actually Fred's middle name, just another little nugget of real life that Fred sprinkles throughout the show. I always thought it was very giving of actor David Newell to allow this video to be shot and used and basically immortalized on Fred's show. Except for one thing. This is not a real wedding. Yes, that's right. It's completely set up. I saw this episode a lot growing up and I had no idea. I mean, that's the actress who plays Mrs. McFeely, so I just always assumed they were married in real life. But no, that's David Newell's actual real-life wife playing the maid of honor. This entire thing just seems so genuine. Look at them there. That's a wonderful acting job. Just another instance of something happening on the neighborhood that is strangely meta in its own way. Hello, darkness, my old friend. But just as the phony flashback ends, the conversation changes. Well, some people get married and after a while they're so unhappy with each other that they don't want to be married anymore. Well, I know, and sometimes they get divorced and that's all very sad. Well, Fred's words playing, after Mr. McFeely leaves really begins to set up the main conversation for this week of episodes. Well, Mr. McFeely left so fast. As soon as we started talking about divorce, I guess that's something he doesn't like to talk about. Did you ever know any grown-ups who got married and then later they got a divorce? Well, it is something that people can talk about. And it's something important. Things like weddings and having babies and buying houses and cars and getting divorces are all grown-up things. So Fred uses the cups he brought in to segue into make-believe. Not to the castle, but to a totally different location. A park, and a picnic lunch for the royal family. The show didn't do this very often, so you can tell that this was something that meant a lot to Fred. The Fridays are having an ongoing argument about whether or not to buy a new jet airplane. Jet plane? Oh, Friday, you have a one-track mind. One jet stream mind, Sarah. When they suddenly meet a mother and daughter. Hello. Hello. I'm Krista Jane Bacardi, and this is my daughter, Patty. Oh, we're glad Tuesday to meet you, and his new Mrs. friend Bacardi. have a very important well, conversation. My daddy's divorced from my mom. What's that mean? 
that means they don't live with each other anymore. You mean you don't see your daddy anymore? I'll bet it feels awful. Sometimes. Time to go, Tuesday. Come along. Oh, that wasn't long at all, Friday. You didn't give them much time at all to be together. Hey, King Friday, go easy on the Bacardis. I hope we'll meet again, Sarah. Well, I do too. We never see these characters again that I'm aware of. With his parents arguing, Tuesday is obviously worried. And he tells Lady Aberlin that he wants to be a machine, so he won't have any feelings. It's obvious that a lot of thoughts and feelings are going on inside the prince. And he's very much That's struggling what with it. I want to be. What? A machine. Why is that? Because I don't want to have feelings. My parents divorced when I was a teenager. So luckily, I didn't have to deal with a lot of the things that Prince Tuesday has to deal with here. I knew I wasn't the problem. But I can certainly appreciate Fred's message here and what he's trying to get across to the many younger children that unfortunately have to go through this confusing time. Also, Mr. McFeely brings a special machine for Corny, and of course, Lady Elaine is curious what it is. How about a hint, dear? I'll tell you when I'm ready. Well, I hope that's soon. Toot toot. In episode two, Fred introduces another ongoing thread throughout the week, pretzels. One wonders exactly how Fred put together his areas of fascination here. Again, the pretzels, like the cups that he used to pretend with and Prince Tuesday used to take out his frustrations with, are something that will be weaved into the story throughout the week. Fred then takes us on a visit to a pretzel factory. It's a place I've always wanted to visit because I like to eat pretzels. We're going to teach you how to make pretzels today, Fred. All right. We're going to teach you how. We'll get your apron on here. Gaining a little weight here, Fred. Wow, that's pretty catty. I love this guy's improv skills. Oh, no, pretzels are not fattening. They're wonderful, tasty for you. And you're right. You've got to try this. This is a very good exercise for the legs. All right. I could literally watch Fred do this all day. I actually made a typo when I was writing this, and I'll share that with you now. Okay. Well, I think this exchange like is interesting. Mm -hmm. And we take one and we cross it over the other. So this is to represent children's arms praying to God. Then we take one and fold over the other. That represents your parents, mom and dad. We one could possibly extrapolate that this back. conversation about Be pretzels sure and the sanctity of marriage as one, some kind of symbolism that Fred was trying to weave into the episode, which That's could explain the whole pretzel subplot, but honestly, I just think Fred likes pretzels. I like to eat pretzels. See? Meanwhile, in make-believe, a lady from the Air and Land Vehicle Incorporated arrives to sell King Friday a new plane. This, of course, angers Queen Sarah. You're not even looking at it. I've given it a great deal of thought. Well, I'm the king. And I'm the queen. We can discuss it anon. Farewell, everyone. Unfortunately, Tuesday hears them arguing, and is of course very upset, thinking the whole thing is his fault. It's at that point that Tuesday decides to pack his bag and leave. Thus begins the search for Prince Tuesday, who's been missing for about five minutes so far. Is he lost? I don't know, but I, I do know that his suitcase and some of his things are gone, and I, I can't find him in the castle. Finally, our old pal Chef Brockett makes an appearance, showing off a pretzel treat. Welcome. I know everybody's thinking about pretzels, and you know, everybody likes pretzels. <laughs> I love that line, everyone's thinking about pretzels, so, I mean, has he been watching the show from his bakery and thought, Hey, I know, I'll make a pretzel thing. That'll get me on the show this week. Seriously, Chef Brockett, you are too much. I'll see you, friend. At the start of episode three of Divorce Week, Mr. Rogers is out jogging and bumps into one of his hippie friends driving their electric car. Again, like the pretzels and the cups, once again, this is something that will dovetail at the end of the week. I did want to take this opportunity not just to point out Fred's jogging suit, but also his pink swoosh Nikes. Mr. Rogers has Nikes on. Gulp, 
Back in make-believe, Tuesday is still missing, and everyone is searching for him, including Harriet Elizabeth Cow, who finds the missing prince asleep at Daniel's clock. They all end up back at the school, but Tuesday isn't keen on going back to the castle just yet. What's wrong with them? They, they fight all the time. I never saw them fight. But you don't live with them. Well, he's got you there. Well, my mother and dad fight sometimes, too. I never saw them fight. Well, you don't live with them. Boom! Anna throws it right back. You go, Anna Platypus. It turns out the school is learning about electric cars. And that Maybe. gives Lady Aberlin an idea. Course, Bookmark this in your Lady brain, Aberlin. because it'll be important for later. No gas. Well, we'll just have to wait and see. <laughs> I think I know who that is. Mr. Rogers? And now begins one of the most often referenced segments in the history of the show. Hi. Thank you very much for coming by. I asked Jeff, this is my friend Jeff Erlinger. Fred introduces us to his here, friend, Jeff Erlinger. Jeff's parents wrote a letter to Fred, and upon eventually meet meeting Jeff, and I he decided having him on the show wheelchair. would be very beneficial to the children watching. The... I got a wheelchair when I was four years old. That was your first one? Mm -hmm. When you were four? Uh-huh. Do you remember that? Look yeah, at these two enough. carrying on a conversation. You actually forget you you're watching a show at all. This is two people talking and connecting. We all have bad days sometimes. Yeah, and then you see how young Jeff handles his struggles, and suddenly you feel very different about your lot in life. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know that song that I sometimes sing called It's You I Like? Uh -huh. I'd like to sing that to you and with you. Okay, okay? sure. It's you I like. And then they it's sing It's You I Like. You wear. And I lose it every it's time. Not the way you do your hair. But it's you I like the way you are right now. The way every time feels great to be a part of the human experience, doesn't it? Not your fancy chair. <laughs> That's just beside you. But it's you. Years later, Jeff and Fred reunited at the TV Hall of Fame in 1999. Sadly, Jeff Erlinger passed away in 2007 at the age of 36. Bye. Bye bye, Jeff. I'll watch you as you go. Another amazing person to stop by the neighborhood. A well-remembered segment, and as you can see, it's for a good reason. I brought something wood to show you today, made of wood. Wood, Jerry. Wood. In episode four, Mr. Rogers has an instrument that he once fixed called a lyre. I'd like to get that missing. Fred calls Joe Negri and says he'll drop the broken lyre by the music shop to get fixed. Also, Mr. McFeely stops by to give Fred a speedy delivery t-shirt. Fred wears it the whole show and, well, it's absolutely darling. I don't see colors very well. Well, that's sort of a yellow. A possibly little known fact about Fred is that he was mostly colorblind, a fact which mostly sort of debunks the theory that there was some sort of significance to the color of the sweaters he would wear for each episode, and makes my color change Mr. Rogers' mug slightly ironic. Meanwhile, at Negri's music shop, Fred speaks to Joe about some repairs. Repairs. Right. Here, Fred meets Joe Negri's friend, Earl Groman, who just happens to be lending one of his books on divorce to Joe Negri. It's here that we see the genius of the way Fred puts these episodes together, using the broken liar as a metaphor to contrast the week's topic. As Earl Groman tells us that marriages aren't like musical instruments, and unfortunately, they can't always be repaired. As I look around, I see the repairs, mm -hmm. and sometimes you bring in things to be repaired. Exactly. And then there are other times when uh, I'm sure you've said, Joe, well, there's nothing I can do. Mm -hmm. And I think the same thing happens with, with mothers and fathers. Meanwhile, back in Make Believe, King Friday is shown for the first and last time in a safari outfit that he seems very proud of.
Also, Queen Sarah and the airplane lady appear to be hatching some kind of scheme. Is that the girlfriend? What are you talking about, Lady Elaine? Lady Elaine shows up dropping all kinds of shade and insists that Prince Tuesday live with her. But when she shows up at school to creep everyone out, Harriet Cow puts her hoof down and decides, let's go to the king and queen and ask them what's up. The prince has a heartwarming reunion with his father and finally tells him how he's feeling. What were you afraid of? You and mother fighting over that airplane stuff. Yes, that has been bothersome, hasn't it? So, Friday, are you going to get a divorce? A divorce, fair child. Why, people can get angry and fight and not get a divorce. You know that. You're not answering the question, Friday. Queen Sarah has asked me to present something to you. Uh, is it about the airplane controversy? In a way. Uh, listen, Toots, we've got more important things to talk about than airplanes. Uh, for once, I agree with you, Fairchild. Oh, I think I'm going to faint. Oh, I, li I really like that line from Lady Elaine. Some real-life humor in make-believe is always appreciated. So it turns out that the king and queen agree on getting an electric plane car that uses no gasoline. Strange that it's the plane lady and Queen Sarah who seemingly hatched this plot, since it seemed like Lady Aberlin had the same idea that was teased the previous episode. Plot hole. A minute. What about the divorce? Uh, that must have been someone else's idea, Fairchild. People do get divorces, you know. Remember Krista Jane McCarty? Thank uh, God true. someone that's remembered the Bacardis. Sad thing. But there's no divorce at this castle on this fine day. Well, that's settled. Now I've still got to find out what Corny's making at his factory. Problems, problems, problems. To end this episode and complete the metaphor, Mr. McFeely returns the fixed liar. And we end this episode on a pun. Well, it fits you to a T. <laughs> Have you ever heard, heard of that expression? Oh, Mr. McFeely. Mrs. McFeely is a lucky lady. Oh, wait, that's not Mrs. McFeely. So as we begin the final episode of Divorce Week, Mr. Rogers... Why is he looking back like that? Why is Mr. Rod... Is someone chasing him? It turns out that Fred is waiting for Mr. McFeely so he can induce terror in the hearts of many. Actually, it's to let the children know that clowns are just pretend. And that leads us to make-believe, where we get one of our first appearances of Chuck Aber as a delivery clown. Chuck Aber, seen here in Silence of the Lambs. She'll be easier to print when we turn her over. Mr. Aber explains that even clowns aren't happy all the time, especially him, since he and his wife are separated. But I'm a real person underneath. He has children that he doesn't get to see very much. Don't make it worse, Tuesday. So the king and queen finally show up in stylish plane car clothes, and they both seem awfully chipper. You two seem very happy today. Oh, well, we are, son. As Corny reveals he's actually making pretzel rocking chairs, the family finally gets their electric plane car. Here's where the concepts that Fred has talked about throughout the week, the electric car, the pretzels, it all ties together. I have a theory on this. You know how kids get interested in one toy or one food or one whatever the thing is, and it sort of becomes the center of their world for a week or so until they move on to something else? I think that's something that Fred understood very well. His interests in pretending about cups, pretzels, and electric cars are his own version of that. How did anybody expect me to guess that? Eat a rocking chair. What a far out neighborhood this is. And if this show had commercials, that would be the tagline. And the royal family flies around the neighborhood. Together. I think it goes without saying just how important this week's episodes are. Fred knew that children had a lot of feelings, and some of them didn't want to talk about it or even know how to. But as Fred says, if you don't talk about it, nobody's ever going to know it's there. And that's not just for children, that's for parents and spouses as well. Talking about how you feel is the most important part of the human experience, and one of the most important facets of married life. As always, Fred says it best. 
When I was a little boy, sometimes I had worries that I didn't know how to tell my mom or dad. But my grandmother sometimes knew I was worried, even when I didn't say so. And I'd really feel glad when she'd mention it to me. I remember worrying and playing about divorce one time. Divorce is something about grown-ups. But it's natural for children to worry about it because they love and they need both their mom and dad. It's a good feeling for me just to be able to talk with you about such things. It's such a good feeling to know you're alive. It's such a happy feeling you're growing inside. And when you wake up ready to say, I think I'll make a snappy new day. For those of you interested in learning more, Fred did an hour-long talk with parents on divorce as a companion piece to this week's episodes, and it's available on VHS if you can find it. Fred also has a book on the topic, certainly a great way to help you and your family through this delicate and confusing time. Look for it on Amazon. They'll help you learn more about it.